where Paramount handily beat analyst profit forecasts as it saw a jump in subscribers for its streaming services. But shares are under pressure right now. Joining us for more is Paramount CFO Naveen Chopra. Naveen, great to get some time with you here. As I just mentioned in the opening, the non-Netflix quarter. So Paramount Plus added 6.8 million subscribers uh, in the most recent quarter. Netflix lost subscribers. Why do you think that disparity exists? Yeah, hey, Brian, it's good to be back with you. And uh, I like the way you framed uh, our quarter. Definitely a very different outcome than, than Netflix, uh, adding 6.8 million subscribers to Paramount+. Plus. And I think it's a sign that despite a lot of the uh, uh, conversation following Netflix results, consumers continue to be very excited about streaming, particularly streaming services that can bring very high quality content that appeals to diverse audiences, which is exactly what we're doing with Paramount Plus. I think it's proof that our strategy is working. That strategy is working because it's differentiated and it's differentiated because we have the ability to combine our traditional business with uh, our streaming aspirations. And that yields a broader model. It's a, it's a model that is broader, both in terms of content, broader in terms of business model, broader in terms of the platforms that we distribute on, and broader in terms of its geographic footprint. So when you put all those things together, we think we have a fundamentally different model and a competitive edge relative to a lot of legacy streamers. Uh, Naveen, you sound like a guy ready to take some, some major market share from Netflix. Now they're out there cutting costs uh, to try to make their next quarter. What do you think that means to Paramount? Well, we're very uh, committed to our, uh, our plan, which we laid out uh, on our investor day earlier this year. As, as you know, Brian, uh, we continue to be very bullish about the opportunity in streaming. Uh, we see a, a very large and growing TAM across both the subscription side of that business and the ad supported components of it. And we're continuing to invest aggressively to capture that. Uh, that being said, we have from day one thought about streaming as a, a business that needs to and will generate healthy margins over time. And we're going to be uh, smart about how we balance uh, investments in growth versus profitability over uh, the next few years. And I think that's something that investors are obviously counting on us to do. You know, in addition to what Saz was mentioning on the Netflix front and the broader entertainment industry, especially in the D2C space right now, looking towards where advertisers can create even more revenue opportunities, you know, what is that net effect to advertising for Paramount if you see even more of that competition in the landscape on the advertising front? Well, we've been big believers in the role of advertising in streaming for a long time now. And uh, it's a big part of obviously what we're doing with Paramount Plus and also the success that we've had with Pluto, which is our free ad supported streaming television service. And, uh, you know, the fact that others are starting to uh, get interested in those elements of the business, we think is validation of our strategy. But I'd note that we not only have a significant first mover advantage here and uh, a large leadership position, uh, the fact is we bring things to that equation that are very unique. The ability to both sell, deliver, measure advertising across uh, broadcast, cable, and digital platforms is very unique. And uh, it's not trivial to stitch together all of the, the, the systems and uh, uh, services that you need in order to do that in a really seamless way for advertisers. We also have really proven that we can drive a lot of advertising growth by combining the direct sales channel where we have deep relationships that have been cultivated over many, many years with the programmatic and indirect channels. And uh, that's a key part of delivering uh, the kind of advertising growth that we've seen in uh, our D2C business, which uh, I point out was up uh, almost 60% in Q1. So uh, we think we're in a very, very strong position there, even as others uh, get interested in uh, what is a very exciting opportunity. Naveen, everything sounds great. But your revenue did miss estimates and the stock is down. So, uh, you know, I get what you're saying about this diversification of the business, the streaming kind of cushioning when other things slow down and vice versa. But, you know, we've seen not just from Paramount, but really across the industry and not just in broad, you know, not just in, in media, but in social media and in tech that advertising generally is slowing down. What do you do about that for the remainder of the year? 
Yeah, we feel uh, very bullish about the, the long term, and I think that's uh, that's really our, our focus um, in the advertising market specifically. There has been some choppiness of, of late that tends to be uh, mostly focused on segments that have uh, exposure to supply chain issues uh, and things of that nature. But there are certainly other segments where we uh, we see some real strength, whether that's uh, things like travel, entertainment. We're looking forward to the uh, the political season at the end of the year, which we think will be a, a nice tailwind for us. So uh, longer term, we feel we feel good about the advertising opportunity. We think we're very uniquely positioned in terms of uh, both what we bring to the table on the traditional side of the business and, as I talked about, being able to combine that with streaming. So uh, over time, I think uh, uh, there will be continue to be a lot of growth potential in uh, in the advertising world. Naveen, I've, I've had some folks tell me that this year and next year combined, Paramount will spend more than $40 billion to uh, develop original content. Is that about right? Uh, well, we, uh, we've talked uh, about our streaming content investments, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the main place where we are looking to increase uh, what we're spending. Uh, I've noted previously that we're, uh, we spent about $2 billion on streaming content investment last year, uh, and we're on our way to spending uh, roughly $6 billion uh, in 2024. That is um, uh, going to be combined with continued investment in the, the traditional linear side of the business. But there is some remixing that will continue to occur between traditional and streaming. Uh, we are a, a major player in, uh, in both of those markets, and we, we, we will continue to invest in, in content to, to get there. But we do it in a very smart way that allows us to leverage content from the traditional side of the business to help power some of our growth in streaming as well. And I think that's one of the big differentiators that we have versus uh, pure play streamers. Perhaps for my own edification, what do you mean by remixing and, and how would that show up in some of the costs, the allocation for producing series uh, in one platform versus another? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, one way to think about it is that we have a lot of content that does what I describe as double duty, where we uh, we use the content on linear and then we also use it on our streaming services. You can think of uh, sports like that, or you could think about many of our movies in a similar fashion because we um, capture box office or theatrical revenue and then move those to, to streaming. And uh, when we do that, we allocate the cost between both uh, the traditional segment and, uh, and streaming. And as consumer behavior moves more in the direction of streaming, then obviously we will allocate more of those costs there to represent uh, how the content is, is being used. But on a total company basis, what we like about that model is we're able to capture revenue in both segments without taking on any true incremental cost. So it's a very efficient model.